Love or Money by Rowena Akinyemi Chapter 1 The Clarkson family lived in the country near Cambridge. About half a mile from the nearest village and about a mile from the river. They had a big old house with a beautiful garden, a lot of flowers and many old trees. One Thursday morning in July, Jackie came in from the garden. She was a tall, fat woman, thirty years old, it was the hottest day of the year, but she wore a warm brown skirt and yellow shirt. She went into the kitchen to get a drink of water. Just then, the phone rang. Cambridge 1379, Jackie said. Hello, this is Diane. I want to talk to Mother. Mother isn't here, Jackie said. She's at the doctor's. Why? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong, Jackie said. Why are you telephoning? You are going to come this weekend. Mother wants everyone to be here. Yes, I want to come. Diane said. I'm phoning because I have no money for the train ticket. No money? Mother is always giving you money. This phone call is very expensive, Diane said coldly. Tell Mother, please. I need the money. Jackie put the phone down. She took a cigarette from her bag and began to smoke. She felt angry because her sister always asked for money. Diane was twenty years old, the youngest in the family. She lived in London, in one room of a big house. She wanted to be a singer. She sang very well but she could never get work. Jackie went back into the kitchen and began to make some sandwiches. Just then, the back door opened and her mother came in. It's very hot, Molly said. She took off her hat and put it down on the table. She was a tall, dark woman with beautiful eyes. Two big black dogs came into the kitchen after her and ran across to her. She sat down and put her hands on their heads. Jackie put the sandwiches on the table. Mother, she said. Diane phoned. She wants money for her train ticket. Molly closed her eyes for a minute. Then she stood up. This afternoon, I want you to get the house ready for the weekend, she said. Oh, and please go to the village later and get my tablets. Yes, mother, Jackie said. Molly went to the door. Mother, please wait a minute, Jackie said. Peter Hobbs came here this morning. He's very angry with you about that letter. He lost his job, you know. Why did you write to his office? He wants to talk to you about it. Well... I don't want to talk to him, Molly said. She opened the door. But, Mother, you don't understand. He's seventeen, and it was his first 
job. He's very, very angry. He says... He says he's going to kill you. Molly did not answer. She went out of the room and closed the door. Chapter 2 It was seven o'clock on Saturday evening. Jackie stood at the window. A car drove slowly up to the front door and stopped. A tall man with white hair got out. It was Albert, the husband of Molly's sister. Here's Uncle Albert, Jackie said. Always late. She went out of the room and opened the front door. Albert came in and went at once to Molly. Oh, dear. I'm very late. I am sorry, Albert said. Fifty years old today. What a wonderful dress. Molly did not smile. Thank you, Albert. We're all getting older. Tonight, she wore a long black dress, and the two black dogs sat at her feet. Everyone is here now. Let's go in to dinner, she said. Everyone stood up and went to the table. The table looks nice, Jackie. What wonderful flowers, Diane said. She was a beautiful girl, with long black hair and dark blue eyes. She wore a long red dress. Albert sat down next to Roger. Roger was Molly's son, her second child. He lived in Cambridge, in an expensive house. Someone called Peter stopped me down the road, Albert said. Who is he? He's very angry with you, Molly. That's Peter Hobbs, from the house across the road, Jackie said quickly. She looked across the table at Molly. He lost his job last week, and he's angry with everyone. It's Molly he doesn't like, Albert said. Molly said nothing. Everyone began to eat. How is Aunt Annie? Jackie asked. She's much worse now, Albert said. She stays in bed all the time. She needs a nurse twenty-four hours a day. I am sorry, Molly said. Albert stopped eating and looked at Molly. It's very difficult and very expensive, you know. Annie feels very unhappy because you don't visit her, Molly. She loves you very much. You are her little sister, you know. Molly closed her eyes for a minute. I know that, Albert. I am fifty years old, but I am always her little sister. Well, we can talk about it later. Albert laughed. Oh, yes, we can talk later. It's always later with you, Molly. Always tomorrow, never today. Jackie watched her mother. Her mother was angry with Albert. Molly never liked talking about her sister Annie. And she did not like visiting her because she was very ill. That's a beautiful dress, Diane, 
Is it new? Jackie asked. Thank you, Jackie. Yes, it's new and very expensive. I got it on Wednesday, Diane said. She smiled at Jackie. All your things are expensive, Jackie said. She remembered the phone call on Thursday about the train ticket. I don't like cheap things, Diane said. And I'm going to need more money soon. I want to go to America. Can you help me, Roger? Oh, no, Roger said. Nobody wants to help you, Diane. You don't like working. We all know that. But we all want you to get a job. Diane laughed. <laughs> it doesn't matter, Roger. I don't need your help. Mother always helps me. Mother loves me best. She suddenly smiled. A quick, beautiful smile. But her eyes were cold. Jackie looked at her mother. Molly's face was white. Jackie did not understand. Was her mother afraid of Diane? Jackie wanted her mother to be happy today. Would you like some more meat, Uncle Albert? Jackie asked. Roger, can you give everyone some more to drink? Roger got up and began to give more wine to everyone. This is good wine, he said. Molly smiled for the first time. Yes, your father loved this wine. He often drank it. Yes, Albert said, and looked at Molly. Expensive, too. Would you like to meet Mr Briggs this weekend, Roger? Jackie asked quickly. He's the new man at the farm. He wants to meet you. Briggs? Briggs? Molly said, suddenly angry. Don't talk to me about that man. I don't like him. He wants half my garden for his farm. He needs more land, he says. I don't want him in my house. He's always dirty and he has bad teeth. Jackie stood up and got her bag. Excuse me. I want a cigarette. Cigarettes? Always a cigarette in your mouth, Molly said. I don't like it. Cigarettes aren't good for you. Jackie began to smoke. She felt angry, but she said nothing. She wanted her mother to be happy this evening but it was very difficult. Roger drank some more wine. Well, mother, perhaps Mr Briggs is right. The garden is very big, you know, he said. It's a lot of work for you. The house is big, too. You're fifty now. You need to be more careful. Roger, I don't need a nurse, you know. I work in the garden every day. I feel happy there. Molly stood up. I know you all want my money. You come here for a free dinner. You don't want to see me. You don't love me. You want my house and my money. Well, you can all wait. Nobody is getting more money from me. Not 
before I die. Don't say that, Mother, Jackie cried. Molly walked across the room to the door. I feel ill now. I'm going upstairs to bed. Molly left the room. Nobody moved. One day, I'm going to kill that woman, Diane said quietly. Roger looked at Diane, but said nothing. Albert moved his head slowly up and down. Ill? She's angry, that's all, he said. Molly always gets angry about money. Why can't she be good to her sister? Annie's going to die soon. Molly knows that. Jackie finished her cigarette and stood up. Would everyone like some coffee? Come into the kitchen and let's drink it there. Chapter 3 Early next morning, the house was quiet. Suddenly, there was a cry from the room next to Roger's, his mother's room. Roger opened his eyes and looked at the clock. It was nearly seven o'clock. He got out of bed and opened the door quietly. At the same time, the door of his mother's room opened, and Diane came out. Her face was very white. Roger! It's Mother! I brought a cup of coffee for her, and I found her dead. She's dead! Dead! In her bed, she cried. Roger went quickly to the door of his mother's room and looked in. The window was open, but the room was warm. Molly was on the bed, one hand under her head. Roger went across to the bed and put his hand on her arm. It was cold. On the little table next to the bed was a hot cup of coffee and an empty cup. I'm going to call the doctor, Diane said. She's dead, Roger said slowly. His face, too, was white. Mother is dead. Diane walked across the room to the door. I'm going to phone the doctor, she said again. Wait a minute, Roger called. Let's tell the family first. Family? Nobody loved Mother. Diane went out and ran downstairs. Roger slowly went downstairs after her and stood by the telephone. Dr. Pratt, this is Diane Clarkson. It's my mother. She's dead. Can you come quickly? Diane put the phone down. It isn't true, Roger. Mother dead. Daddy died last winter. And now Mother... Diane began to cry. Don't cry, Diane, Roger said. Let's go upstairs and tell Uncle Albert and Jackie. No! 
You tell them. Nobody loved Mother. You aren't sorry. Look at you. You want her money, that's all. Roger suddenly wanted to hit Diane. Be quiet, he said. What about you? You didn't love Mother. You wanted her money too. Don't forget that. It's true, Diane said. Oh, I can't stay in this house. I'm going out. I'm going to the river with the dogs. No, Roger said. The doctor's coming. And I want you here. Diane said nothing. She went into the kitchen. And at once, the dogs got up and came to her. Beautiful dogs. Daddy loved you. And Mother loved you. Now I'm going to love you. She opened the back door and went out with the dogs. Roger did not move. He stood by the telephone. It's true, he thought. I am happy about the money. I needed money, and now I'm rich. Things are going to be easier for me now. But, Mother, why didn't I love her more? And now she's dead. Slowly, Roger went back upstairs. He wanted to dress before Dr. Pratt arrived. Dr. Pratt was a little fat man without much hair. He was the family doctor, and he knew all the clerks and family very well. He went upstairs at once and looked at Molly's body. He looked carefully at the cup of coffee and the empty cup on the table next to her bed. I'm sorry, Roger, he said. Where is Diane? She phoned me. She went out with the dogs, Roger said. She was angry with me, angry with everyone. Dr. Pratt said nothing for a minute. This is going to be very difficult. I'm going to phone the police, Roger. Police? Why? What's wrong? I don't know. Your mother wasn't ill. I saw her on Thursday, and she was very well. Why did she die? I don't understand. I want to find out. Roger went across to the window and looked out at the garden. It was a beautiful summer morning. The sky was blue and the garden was green. It was all very quiet. His mother loved this garden. But Tom Briggs wanted the garden. And Roger wanted the garden too. Roger felt worse and worse. Your mother took sleeping tablets, Dr. Pratt said. Did you know? On Thursday, she had a new bottle of tablets. But I can't find it here in her room. I didn't know, Roger said. 
Very well. Let's go downstairs. And you can phone the police. Roger went into the kitchen and made some coffee. Just then, Diane came in with the dogs. Roger, she said. Look, I'm sorry. I was angry and said some angry things. It doesn't matter, Roger said. Here you are. Have some coffee. Dr. Pratt is phoning the police. Did you know Mother took sleeping tablets? Well, the bottle is not in her room. What? I don't understand. Diane took the coffee and began to drink. Her eyes looked big and dark. Just then, Dr. Pratt came into the kitchen. They're coming at once, he said. Diane, I'm sorry about your mother. Dr. Pratt, I want to tell you about last night. Everyone was very angry. Be quiet. Roger said quickly. Diane never thinks before she opens her mouth, he thought angrily. Diane did not look at Roger. Last night, Mother went to bed early because everyone... Don't tell me, Dr Pratt said. You can tell the police. Roger's face went red. Suddenly he felt afraid. The police are going to talk to everyone and ask questions, he thought. And they're going to want answers. It's going to be very difficult. He finished his coffee and stood up. I'm going upstairs, he said. I'm going to tell Uncle Albert and Jackie about Mother and about the police.